Gonna have a more. This video is going to be a really good one. I joined Zwift in April this year, 2023, and I did two FTP tests. I ballsed one of them up. Oh my God. And then almost immediately, I started racing. I haven't got it. Oh, oh, I came dead last. I have learned that you cannot be in contention for a podium place or even attempt to sprint finish if you get dropped easily in a race. It seems obvious. For anyone that doesn't know, getting dropped is allowing the race lead pack to get away from you. Something that I'm really, really good at. I'm on my own for most of the second lap. In fact, I'm on my own for the rest of the race, really. It's tough. I've been dropped from any significant groups with no real chance of a comeback in the race. been dropped. We've got a hill here. Otherwise I'm gonna get dropped. Swift racing is hard and really competitive. I love it. I've been making the mistake of going into all of my category D races with the wrong mentality. So in this video, I intend to change that mentality and I've decided that I no longer wish to be dropped in races. Okay, good. Today's race is gonna be a good one. I'm about to get on the Watt bike and we're about to start a, a race. I found one a short while ago that, sh that started within a, a reasonable time. Um, it's, a, it's a course I've done before, it's the Yoko Crit course. So this video's challenge is a simple one. I'm not really sure what my strengths and weaknesses are. I'm probably more confident on what my weaknesses are, being I'm quite a heavy newbie rider on Zwift. So I know that as soon as I hit hills, I have to work harder than those that I'm with to try and get up to the top of it without being dropped. So the challenge is, I'm gonna keep racing until I'm able to finish the entire race with the lead pack. That's it. Also, I've bought myself a little present. I've bought myself, I bought myself a hat. Uh, what are the twins in Alice in Wonderland? That's logic. Yeah, bought myself a cycling hat. I've also, bought myself, there was a reason I bought these, a selection of colourful towels. I keep forgetting my towels, so if I've, if I've bought myself some, I'm less likely to forget them, right? I'm gonna go for the pink one. The first race as part of this challenge was the Galaxy Crit Race. Five laps around the, the Neoko Crit Circuit, totaling 20K. All right, someone's gone off fast. The Neoko race started off well, albeit a little fast, having to drop in excess of 400 watts just to get into the lead pack. I was very pleased with this start. I had good wattage and a high RPM. And these are all things that I'm currently working on. Okay, we're at the front. So it's just 20 kilometers. The lead riders dropping six and sometimes seven watts per kg to assert their dominance was a bit tough. And the rest of us trying to play catch up only seconds in, into the race, having to drop three or four watts per kg made it even harder. Now I pushed to the front knowing that the rest of the pack would fall in around me and I could slide slowly to the back of the pack and enjoy the draft benefit. This is a good example of why getting off the start line fast is so important. You can see that the race is a race of two packs now. The lead pack and another pack only four seconds behind us, but they now have to put in a big effort to catch us. I'd rather put in a smaller effort on the start line than have to play catch up at this point in the race. This lead pack is too fast for me. I'm having to drop 300, sometimes 400 watts just to remain in the draft. I'm desperately hoping that this pack settles down and comes together, but in reality, I know it probably won't. I then have to put another 400 plus watt dig to catch the lead pack again. My heart rate again spiking, and I don't really recover before the only major incline on the course. This first lap was brutal. The lead rider of this pack really not dropping below 3.5 watts per kg for the whole lap. He was setting the pace and it was obvious others were struggling as we were all over the place. It was completely strung out. 
I also know I'm yo-yoing from the back to the front and I'm doing it quite a lot. I am really working on this. I know it's something which I need to get better at as it doesn't offer me the draft benefit. Um, and I, yeah, it's just something I'm working on. Still in the first lap, we approach the only real climb of the course. It's not huge, but I do know it's there and I need to work hard to stay with them. I remember there being hills here. My heart rate's high. I always start the race as I mean to go on. However, as soon as we hit a hill, I get dropped. There are things that I need to fix to improve my hill climbing abilities and stick with the front group. First is to lose weight. I currently weigh 111 kilograms and the heavier you are, the slower you are up a hill. Losing weight is not a quick fix. You see, I'm currently over 10 stone or 64 kg lighter than I was only a few years ago. So I count myself lucky to even be on a smart bike in Cat D racing on Zwift. I don't take this for granted. We are category enforced, meaning that with the exception of the odd sandbagger, I should be able to duke it out during the race and be in a place to fight for a podium finish. I do put in a sprint finish effort level dig to try and catch them and even with a feather I'm too far away and I can't keep up with them. That's it. That This is the point of the race that I'm dropped. It's that easy to get dropped and I have no real chance in catching them. That's the end of the challenge in this race. The challenge of staying with the lead pack is done. I finish the race, nothing particularly eventful happens. I have a mini race with another rider and finishing 8th out of 16. Dead middle of the pack. Mission not completed. The good news was that I had a spike in my FTP. I went from 216 watts up to 228 watts. Now on to the next race. I couldn't decide if I should include this next race in this video as I made a massive schoolboy error and joined race 4 of the Zwift Inside a Tiny Race series without completing the first three. I only realized it was race four or four after the start banner dropped and I was already racing. So apologies to anyone I may have disrupted. It wasn't intentional. Okay, this is race number two. Yeah, we've got six minutes until the start of this race. So I'm just gonna take this as an opportunity to keep warm. The only reason I chose it was because I was looking for a short, sharp race in a rush and I didn't read past the name Tiny Race. I saw it was 5k and just went for it. Right, let's get off the line. The banner went on the start line and unlike the last race, this one was more controlled. Possibly because everyone else was knackered from racing three previous races, but we will overlook that one. Right, so we're going to stick with the front pack, Scardi. I don't want to get dropped. So it'll be 5k, 5.5k. It's a short one. I nestled in just behind the leaders like a cuckoo in another bird's nest and held on for dear life. Now, the race carries on like this for a few K and I yo-yo a few times. I need to stop doing this. I am aware I am working on it. I keep pushing to the front of the pack intentionally. Now, I need to have stayed back at the back recovering from the draft. However, I was also very aware that there may be some breaks and I didn't want to be at the back caught off guard. I just held the same wattage and kept moving to the front. It's all psychological, as I'm aware that if I don't do this, I won't have the energy to close anyone down pushing. Right, 3K, 2K down. We managed to stick with them. I also know there's a short climb incoming. I'm starting to get dropped. On hindsight, I should have pushed from the front, allowing me more time to get up the hill with a chance of remaining with the pack. And if I do start moving back through the pack, it allows me more time to catch them. I then hit the top of the incline behind the lead group. Tactically, I got this climb wrong. 5% hill. Oh my God. I do attempt to catch back up, but I'm too gassed to do so. I'm getting dropped. And then that's it. Again, like the last race, challenge over. I've been dropped. There's no way I'm catching them back up. This knackered. Now I finished the race, but that's not important as I shouldn't have been racing that race anyway. And then I move on. I then do a succession of other events such as Out to Zwift Climb Challenge and my own backyard duathlon both of which you can watch on my channel the videos will be in the link in the description now my next race as part of my don't get drop challenge is one that was suggested to me by another youtuber called lee cycling i've left a link to his channel in the description he offers really good narration and insight into his own races which i i've personally found very helpful he suggested i try the downtown dolphins course in a fast crit race so this is now my third race it's a few days since my last race, um, I've been doing other things, including running. But today, I originally had two races planned in. I had one for 12 o'clock midday earlier, and I had one for six o'clock. It's now half five. I didn't do the 12 o'clock one for two reasons. Firstly, because I've got a small niggle on the back of my leg, on my, on my calf muscle. 
there's a small twinge, nothing major, I can still run and cycle and everything, but I'm trying to rest it so it doesn't get worse and I don't really want to exacerbate it. Anyway, that's the excuse for not doing it at 12. Instead, I went for a big lunch with the family, so I need to work off all the calories that I ate for lunch. Um, so we went out for the day. So I'm back now, uh, I'm about to do a 30 minute warm up. So this is still part of my challenge to finish a race with the lead pack. I have no interest in coming first, second or third. I'm not bothered about a podium finish. I'm just fed up with racing and not being able to stay with the lead pack. Now, obviously, if I was lighter, it would make a huge difference. But right now, the only thing I can do is all the small things that people say, tip-wise, are things that you can do to influence races. So a couple of things that I've done. The first thing is I'm gonna have a proper warm-up. The other thing I'm gonna do, I've bought a new bike on Zwift. I bought a new Avatar bike, and it's the Aeroad. 2021, I think it's called. It's been recommended to me by a couple of comments. I'll put one of the comments up in the screen now. And I just thought it came in, in Zwift Insider's top five bikes. So what the hell, it can't hurt, can it? Now I still need to buy some lighter wheels. Please comment below your tips for the best wheels for a low level scrub like me that will complement my Air Road 2021. No point suggesting anything that requires a higher level because I'm not that level yet. So we're just over five minutes now. We're in the pen. Uh, at the moment, there's only six of us in this D category uh, sprint race. It's called Sprint Series Racing. So it's the INC Relentless Sprint Series Racing. It's going to be six laps of downtown Dolphin. It's got a bit of a gnarly incline that people attack on. Some rollers that lead into the finish line, start finish line. So it's got some tactical bits, but mainly flat, which hopefully will mean I can get to the end of these six laps without being dropped. I've got my daughter, Scarly, sat here watching me for inspiration. She's gonna cheer me on. Give the camera a wave. There is no way I can get dropped now with an audience, especially an audience that's my impressionable daughter. I'm just hoping there isn't a a C category rider that's having a bad day and has decided to race in D. Now I felt really geared up for this race. I was in a good mood. Uh, I'd had some rest and I was ready for it. Right, 20 seconds. Let's start spinning up. I had three main goals. Get off the start line fast. Do not play yo-yo through the pack. And most importantly, do not get dropped. I have a nice exchange in chat with a subscriber who's in the same race. I always appreciate that. Let's go. And then I start the race like a bat out of hell. Okay, I've gone out early. And why not? I hit this as hard as I can. No reason not to. I feel really aggressive. I quickly find myself at the front and setting the pace, which is a unique feeling and I like it. I'm addicted to it. The others then catch me, which I'm grateful for, if I'm honest, because I'm knackered. And we start the incline for the first time of the race. Right, this is the incline. Oh my God. I averaged 3.3 watts per kg up the climb. And then I'm really happy with that as the first real test of not getting dropped is done. I'm intentionally staying in the middle of the pack rather than allow myself to drift to the back so I can react quicker if someone pushes on. I know I'd said I'd stay at the back, but I feel comfortable here. And I'm trying really hard not to yo-yo to the front. No damage done this, Scarly. We got to the top. I was really pleased with lap one. It felt like I had impacted on the race, which was an unusual feeling for me. But it did leave me feeling that there would be a big push soon and the others were holding themselves back. The power-ups in this race were the aero, feather and the draft power-up and every lap I hoped for the feather. Spoiler, I never got the feather once in this course. Of course I didn't, the one I wanted. The small hill climb was also something that I'd focused on every lap. All right, here we go. And this time it's probably more important than the first lap as this is the real test to see if the first lap was a fluke or if the others were holding back. Okay, okay, everyone calm down. Good. All right. We survived. Oh. Now I've got my secret weapon in the form of my daughter who is there to hit my power-ups for me and shout words of encouragement. All right, hit it. 
Well done, Ryan. This feels like I've overcome my first hurdle in this race. I'm knackered, so Scarlet hits the aero boost, and I allow myself a small amount of recovery. We then hit lap three and go again. Right, what we got? Good. Still no feather. It helps me draft to drag. It makes the avatars in front of me wider, so it gives me a better draft benefit. We'll use it on the same point again. Yeah. I'm still in the lead pack and I feel confident. I flew up the hill for the third time and again used the power up to recover on the flat. Oh. Right, hit it. Okay, rollers. Everyone calm down. And I rinse and repeat for the final two laps. My confidence growing with every successful lap completed without being dropped. As we enter the final lap, I know at some point someone will make an attack. Now my logic is to attack the hill. This is where I'm expecting the others to push and I then won't have time to react if I get dropped here. You ready, Scotty? I drop 4.5 watts per kg into the climb and fight my way to the top. Climb was where I win or lose this challenge and I got to the top of the climb without being dropped for the last time of the race. I attacked it and I've been dropped. I'm now absolutely knackered. I'm completely spent, but I can't waste this opportunity. This is the first time in any race I've been at the front of the pack as we go into the sprint finish. This will be the first time in my Zwifting escapades that will be in contention for a podium finish. I saved my power up for the sprint finish. I'm almost as impressed with my power up usage as I am with my efforts on the climb. Historically, I've been terrible using power ups and I think in this race, I've used them really well. Heart rate, come down. I really need my heart rate to drop, but we haven't got time to worry about that. Then Ullman goes for it. He attacks the rollers and does a really good job in getting ahead. If I wasn't so gassed, I would have chased him down and I wish I had on hindsight. Milan then drafts off me before making his attack. I was hoping he'd also chase down for first place so I could draft off him and get that elasticated effect I've seen work well for others, but he doesn't. Then the others come through using our draft to springboard them forward and I'm completely spent. I try and put in a pathetic sprint and the problem was I went too early. I didn't really do one or the other. I didn't stay back and conserve myself for the sprint and I didn't really push forward for first place. I've got no more. But let's forget about all that because most importantly, challenge completed. I did it. I had no more. I had to tap the hill. I would have never have been in the pack at the end. That is by far my best race. I'm so pleased with that. I wish I could have come third. I was so close. This race was made for me. I couldn't have picked a better course or a better bunch of riders for this challenge. Obviously, I have no control over the other riders. <laughs> I didn't get dropped. 
I finished in fifth, and most importantly, remained with the chasing pack for this entire race. That is the first time I've ever managed to achieve this. I absolutely loved it. This was my best race so far. I can climb out to Swift 100 times and it won't compare to how ecstatic I am with this achievement. A feeling I'm sure all Zwifters can appreciate and not just newbie Cat D riders. That's one big hurdle I've now overcome. My next challenge, my next real challenge in Zwift is a podium finish. Watch this space. Please subscribe and thanks for watching my video. Oh, and one other thing. I had another nice little spike in my FTP on the back of this race. I've now gone from 228 watts to 232. Thanks for watching.